Thank you, Carlos. Uh, thank you for the invitation to all the organizers of the conference. Uh, thanks for being here. So, <clears throat> so this is a, uh, is a paper, is joint with uh, two colleagues of mine at the University of Bari, Nicola Coniglio and uh, Davide Vurchio, is on the uh, relationship between uh, international migration and income inequality. Okay? This is an empirical paper, so we we, we ask some questions, we try to, to answer to these questions by, and by two different empirical exercises. So these are the two questions which motivate the, the, the paper and to which we try to give an answer. The first is, uh, so it's the first direction. Does income inequality in the origin and destination countries shapes international migration? So is uh, inequality in the destination and the origin country uh, uh, an important factor in explaining uh, the, the, the flows of migration. And the second question is the, the other way around. So uh, does international migration affect substantial, substantially global inequality? Okay, so we try to address these two questions empirically. Now, on the first one, so this is an awful slide, so I'll try to... <laughs> uh, so mo most studies on determinants of migrations uh, focus on the difference between countries in terms of uh, per capita GDP, okay? Uh, no, there is one sentence by Milanovic which really captures what we have in mind, that uh, when uh, uh, individuals make a choice, uh, so decide to which country to migrate, uh, basically they are, you know, uh, choosing at least two public goods, as Milanovic says, uh, which is the average income of the country, so the, the standard of living in general of the country, and the distributional, uh, the distribution of income. So with all the, 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 the aspect of the distribution of income. So in, in a sense, we model this choice as, as a choice under uncertainty. So the idea is that uh, an individual uh, chooses where to migrate, and uh, looks at the full distribution, okay? And you can model this as a choice under uncertainty, so imagining uh, as uh, roles uh, in the original position that the individuals know the distributions, but they do not know their positions in the distribution. Or, it is, uh, it's also a legitimate uh, uh, hypothesis, uh, Individuals can make uh, some uh, uh, assumption on where they will locate in the in the, in the country that they, they will arrive. In any and in any case, the distribution of the country they, they go is relevant for their choices. Either if you model it as a mod, as a, a choice under uncertainty, and then there is a, the isomorphism between risk and uh, inequality, or explicitly because you know that you are going to be in a distribution, you are going to locate probably in the lower tail of the distribution, so it's uh, interesting for you what is the distance between your position distribution and the average, okay? So whatever is your, your way, the way you, you, you want to model this, uh, this choice, uh, the inequality plays a role. We discuss this in, in the paper, we, we use uh, standard results to, you know, to, to justify why, uh, when individuals make a choice, uh, they take into account uh, the inequality, okay? And we, we obtain some standard results. We apply standard results. Uh, so, uh, we estimate a set of models on the determinants of auto-migration, and uh, for the period 2004-2015, basically we consider about 100 countries for which people migrate, and about 30 OECD countries to which individuals migrate, okay? And we use this database. So one is the database that uh, Carlos just uh, uh, um, introduced, and then we have uh, these other databases we, we, we show here, okay? Now, um, there are different theoretical mechanisms that uh, uh, in the literature have been proposed to show why the inequality in the origin country may play a role, okay? And uh, we discuss this in the literature. Although I must say that we are more interested in, in uh, explaining why the destination country inequality does play a role, okay? So in a sense, we, we if I have to say our paper is characterized by uh, an accent on, on this, this second aspect. And uh, on the, is there a, yeah, and uh, on the, what we call inequality dissimilarity. So the difference between the inequality in the destination and in the origin country, okay? Now, uh, what do we know? We know something in the literature, 
basically, w there is evidence that the inequality in the origin country plays a role. There are empirical evidence for that. Uh, there, is a res there is evidence uh, uh, that also the uh, destination uh, inequality matters, but I would say that that evidence is uh, indirect, in the mainly indirect, in the sense that the discussion has been mainly focused on the distinction between skilled and unskilled individuals and how this composition plays a role in shaping the inequality in the destination country. We don't make this uh, discussion in the paper. We just talk about inequality in the full distribution, okay? Although, of course, that mechanism on the composition uh, can be behind the results that we, 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 can, we can see, we can obtain. Now, these are the, the, <coughs> the models we, 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 we test. We are still within the, the first uh, uh, issue here, eh? the effect of inequality on migration. So we, we test these two models. Model one, the total outflow from country I at time T. So this is a the total outflow from country I time T. And uh, we test if this depends, in addition to some controls, also, so these are fixed effect. We have uh, the fixed effect of country I and the time fixed effect. And uh, we test if this depends on the inequality in, in, in country I. And then uh, the model two, which, which is the, the only one I'm going to show you uh, l later on, we, we, we have different specification basically to, to test if also the inequality in, uh, so this is the bilateral flows from country I to country J, okay? And so we have inequality in both countries, I and J, okay? And then in this uh, last model, we have inequality dissimilarity. So the difference, uh, that is the absolute difference in the Gini of the two countries, okay? That's the similarity. Uh, sorry, I had the, yeah. Uh, just to add that, uh, yeah, in this, uh, X vector, we have the usual uh, variables that are used in these uh, uh, gravel-like models. So the GDP and the population of the country. And then, as I said, okay, uh, yeah, we, 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 we tried different uh, inequality metrics, not just Gini, but uh, I represent only the Gini. Now, these are the results. <clears throat> Carlos, are you going to give me five minutes uh, at some point? Yeah, five minutes, two minutes, and zero. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, so let me let me let me focus on uh, what I think of the the main results here that could be interesting. So first of all, the first model is the one when when we have uh, just uh, the you know the the control. So the the GDP, the the population, the GDP in destination and population destination. Now in model two we add the inequality. Here we have inequality in the origin country and inequality in destination, and you see that uh, the inequality in destination is uh, significant and is negative. So the sign is the one you expect in the sense that uh, the higher is the inequality, okay, the less is the bilateral migration to that country, okay? So it's exactly what, what one would expect. Then we put together, uh, uh, let's, go to, let's go to model four, please. Then we put together the uh, inequality in the origin country and inequality in the destination country. And they are both significant and uh, again, in the, in the right uh, direction, in the sense that inequality in the origin country as a positive sign, and that is what the lecture, say, the lecture says, okay? That is a pull factor of the inequality. So more unequal is the country, the more you want to live. And inequality in the destination country is a force against the, the decision. And here you have this, uh, this similarity index, uh, we are in model four, which is uh, quite significant as a negative sign. So here I leave this for discussion because I'd like really some help to interpret these results. Because think of this dissimilarity. That is the absolute difference between inequality in the destination and inequality in the origin. Sorry, the, the, the other way around. Anyway, it's the absolute value, so sorry. Uh, whatever the, 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 the place. So there is a mechanical aspect here in the sense that uh, how this dissimilarity can increase. Either if the inequality in destination is higher, Okay, or the inequality in the country is uh, in the country of origin is lower. Now, both cases would play against the uh, the the uh, the migration. Okay, so that sign is not really the right the sign one would expect. But in in this uh, in this uh, in this uh, equation, I mean, this is a 
the inequality in the two, can in the two countries are, is already taken into account. So this is the second order effect one could interpret. So the, 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 the question is, uh, what is behind that uh, that could be captured? Okay, then we test for some other distributional aspects in the destination country, which are interesting, but I don't have time. Okay, let me, let me go to the, yeah. Second question. What is the effect of international migration on global inequality? So this is just to say that uh, there are differences between the distribution of countries in the world, we know. So uh, I think I will skip that, <laughs> that nice slide. And uh, I, let me tell you another thing. So, uh, first of all, when we say global inequality, you know, we can think of uh, different. So there is uh, the inequality in the world population, which can be the composed in inequality between countries with or without population weight and within countries. Now, uh, Wales uh, very uh, neatly and nicely summarizes one thing that comes from the literature that may be a trade-off between the global and internal effect of migration on inequality. So what is the idea, I summarize it here, that uh, uh, migration could have an effect on reducing inequality between countries and increasing the inequality within countries, okay? These two effects may counteract each other. So may, may uh, uh, explain why the effect of migration on global inequality is very low. So this means that the effect of inequality, sorry, the effect of migration on global inequality is not negligible because it doesn't have an effect, but it goes, it, but because it affects two phenomena which are different within and between in a very different way, in opposite way. So and that is in fact, I anticipate our results. And uh, so one thing I'd like to spend some time, but I don't have time is a, a pure of course, I have very much taste for this, uh, this uh, theoretical issue here. So from a pure theoretical issue, uh, from a pure theoretical point of view, you know, the migration, the effect of migration on inequality is you have different distributions, you move a mass from one distribution to the other. So the problem is, uh, what is this effect on, uh, uh, on inequality? And I was puzzled because uh, uh, there were no papers I could find to see exactly what are the conditions under which the movement of one individual from one distribution to another does increase or decrease the inequality in the destination country. Then I found this paper by Peter Lambert in 2006, where he, he, he basically he isolates the condition under which uh, the movement of one individual from one distribution to another, according to the inequality measure we are using, is inequality increasing or inequality decreasing. So from a theoretical point of view, this issue can be treated. Of course, empirically, it's not as simple as that, because uh, you have some indirect effect when you migrate. You have remittances, you have the change you, induce, you indu induces in the destination uh, distribution, so it's not as simple as that. But still, you know, this can be treated uh, yeah, in, a, in a nice way. Okay, so what we do, we basically we compare two distributions. One is uh, uh, the real distribution, so the world income distribution with migration, okay? Here we have two different uh, specifications. One is the real, the, the real world income distribution that we observe with, the, with migration, and then uh, a world income distribution we construct in order to keep the population of the countries as if uh, there were not migration, okay? So the population size is the same as if there was not migration. So we have two specifications of this world income distribution. And then we compare these with a counterfactual of distribution in which there is no migration. How do we do that? We, imp we uh, uh, allocate the individuals who migrate, so the diasporas, in the origin countries and in the percentiles from which they come from. How do we allocate to the percentiles? Here we use uh, uh, an, a very nice database uh, completed by Clemens and Mendola. It's not a database, but uh, they worked on the, on the Gallup data to allocate the individuals to income desires of the origin countries. And, and then we compute inequality between and within country. I just go to the results. So these are our results. The migration has an effect on the between income inequality of 9.2%. What is that? That is the reduction in the Gini between countries. And it has a, an effect on the Gini within countries of almost the same size, but different sign, okay? 
So these two basically, you know, uh, they, they, they cancel out uh, when, when you sum the two. So basically the point is that uh, the effect of migration on global inequality is not irrelevant, but uh, is a compensation of opposite forces. And uh, yeah, and uh, zero, so I stop here. Thank you.